I don't know. I'm kind of low on wisdom this morning. I don't have anything that profound. <laughs> Not that, you know. Not that what? Not that I, you know, <laughs> am the most profound person, but I'm just saying. <laughs> today I'm even less. <laughs> I got bit by a dog over the weekend. It's been stressful. It's been a stressful the past couple of days. <laughs> anyway, let's see what Joe has got. <laughs> you got bit by a dog? Yeah, that's a long story. <laughs> you got rabies? Well, the more I thought about it, the more I thought about the problem, it just caused more problems. <laughs> I went to urgent care. I, I, so it's a perfect example of thinking about it doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> you, went to, you went to urgent care to see if you had rabies? <laughs> I did. I, you know, anyway, yeah. It, <laughs> Pleasure. Yeah. And did they say you had rabies? Well, I don't know. They, you know, they kind of just put some stuff on it. It was minor, but, <laughs> you know, you, you got to be yeah. sure nowadays, you know. Okay. Minor rabies. <laughs> minor, ra- <laughs> yeah, minor rabies. <laughs> they gave him a baby aspirin and a cartoon Band-Aid. <laughs> exactly. Hey, you have minor rabies. This is all you need. <laughs> okay, we're digressing. <laughs> Sitting next to a son, he might have rabies. Yes. Yeah. Are you concerned you yes. can catch rabies? From Thought about side? it as soon as I sat down. What is rabies? <laughs> Your dog disease. Oh, you don't want it. you don't want rabies. It's crazy. I heard. Really? Yeah. Like you can't drink water, but you're thirsty and you die. And then, oh. Whoa. Yeah. Oh. And then you don't remember your 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 wisdom. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why you why can't you drink water? <laughs> because you just can't keep it down. Oh, because you throwing up? Uh, I don't know what it is, but uh, but I read about it on Reddit. Okay, anyways, all right. Nick, look it up, Nick. Uh, I'm getting scared of it. <laughs> so, you better call your mama. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got much longer. <laughs> <laughs> you we got to have a sweet potato pie contact before I expire. Who gets Sandman when, when you're gone? Good That's the real important. Jesse. His mama take uh, it. No, I'm gifting him to Jesse. Uh uh, he won't last long. <laughs> okay. Mr. Sam will be following you real soon. <laughs> uh, give him to your mama. I mean, that's probably not much better. <laughs> <laughs> Rather, uh, rather euthanize him. That, <laughs> if if you if you leave with me, I'm gonna put him outside. The, 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 the sooner the, the, your eyes are closed, <laughs> let him fend for himself. Let him go wherever you want to go. Uh, Nick says, seek immediate care if you were bitten by any animal. You may be in danger. Well met. But he did. And he went to urgent care. And they put a band-aid on him and gave him a glass of water and told him to go home. Glass <laughs> <laughs> <Lots> of water. <laughs> I think you're foaming from the mouth if you have rabies, though, right? You are foaming. <laughs> did you drink <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is happening? Did you drink water today? <laughs> <laughs> you want some water? <laughs> Make sure you don't have rabies. I gotta see if I can hold it down. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, anyway. <laughs> you want me to answer? This is, funny. This is even funny. I don't even know why I'm laughing. <laughs> they have morbid sense of humor. Oh, my God. I got to leave the studio right now. I don't even I know why. Leave. 
Todd, I hate what he's doing. <laughs> Explain uh, yourself. <laughs> All right. Are we on drugs? What's going on? <laughs> Maybe I gave everybody rabies. <laughs> oh. oh, God. Oh, man. Let me see if I can drink water. <laughs> Maybe it's a gas leak. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. now he's making rabies jokes. <laughs> Tyler, well, I disavow this. I gotta go through all. I disavow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, By thinking about I'm it. I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> when you die, meaning that you drop your body, and then your family go to your funeral, come to your funeral, you land up at, at the the mortuary, wherever they have the funeral at, the church or wherever, and you open up the casket. They open up the casket to look at you for the last time while they hoop and holler and carry on. And when they open up the casket, it might not be you. <laughs> you may, you, they may, the person in the casket may have on your clothes, but it might not be you. And you're looking up saying, hey, I'm down here. That's not me. What y'all crying for? Y'all crying over the wrong person. Well, apparently that happened somewhere. According to the New York Post, a Mississippi family mourning the loss of a relative was uh, further anguished when they showed up for the funeral and realized another woman was lying in a casket, wearing their loved ones' clothes and jewelry. I wonder, is, it what, is this what you call snatch and grab? Watch this from WLBT. I'm looking at this body, and I'm <laughs> like, what have they done to my sister? And I'm like, no way, this can't be my sister. Georgia Robinson says she and the rest of her family showed up at the wake for their loved one, Mary Jean Robinson. But that's when Georgia immediately noticed something was wrong. Once we got in there, uh, signed the books and everything, was walking down to uh, <laughs> view her body, I knew something was kind of off. I could tell that it wasn't her from way back. <laughs> The family says even more shockingly, the person lying in the casket was wearing the clothes and jewelry they bought for their loved one. This Snack is and not grab. my sister. I said, this is her casket. This is the outfit that we brought her. <laughs> this is the jewelry that we brought her. She demanded to speak with a director of the funeral home. We was telling him about the mistake, and he was very rude and very uncaring. He had an attitude, first of all, with my sister's son. If we had had a closed casket, we would have ended up burying someone else's loved one instead of ours. Stewart, one of the directors there, told us he couldn't confirm or deny that the mix-up happened, but says the family told him they were pleased with their services. <laughs> what the? Black people are doing snatch and grab when you dead. <laughs> they were throwing the woman clothes. That her jewelry. Oh, let's take it. Grandma look good in this. Somebody else clothes. What the? They're taking snatching grab too far. And one other thing I quickly want to remind you of. You know, I had a caller earlier tell me that he be he had hope, and he believed that the country will come back because he has hope, faith in that. And I, the, America is not coming back. It ain't. And all the hope and faith in the world ain't going to do it. All right? It's getting worse. And if you doubt me, if you have any idea, and you doubt me, and you have ideas that the, my country's coming back, talk to the people in South Africa. Really, you can just talk to them. And maybe a physical example can help you understand uh, that it's not coming back. But we have a one-party system in our country today, whether you realize it or not. And the criminals have been taught to go out into the suburbs now, go to the white folks and rip them off. 
and they've been teaching the blacks that for a long time. I've said 30 something years ago, they're teaching the black people, why y'all stealing from your own neighborhood? Why y'all burning down your own neighborhood? Why don't you go out to the white neighborhood? Go to the suburbs. And it's finally caught on. KTLA is reporting. Residents are concerned as a troubling uptick in dinnertime burglaries appear to be targeting communities in the San Fernando Valley. Watch this from KTLA. Owners are being terrorized by a growing number of dinner time burglaries. We've certainly seen an increase in burglaries like these in recent weeks. In many cases, residents were home at the time. On his home security app, he watched three men wearing hoodies jump his fence and begin prowling around his home. I was just like, okay, I know where this is going. Open up the safe, grab my gun. You can see the suspects peering into windows. Lozano says he didn't know if they were armed, but wasn't about to let them get inside and took a position near his sliding door to the patio. He chased after them, his gun in hand, the suspects jumping the fence. He says he called 911, but was surprised the police never showed up. Yeah. I dialed 911, called the operator, explained to the operator what had just happened, just told him they had just gotten away. She says, okay, put me on hold. They transferred me to the non-emergency number, which I was there for like almost 45 minutes. He even called his local LAPD station and left a message. They have a recording. I left the recording on the machine, explained who I was, what the situation was, and I haven't heard a call back from anybody. Woodland yeah. Hills resident Tim Gaspar says his home was broken into Monday evening while he and his family were out for an early dinner. Another break in Wednesday evening in Sherman Oaks looks disturbingly familiar. The back door smashed with shattered glass everywhere. The homeowner says it happened just before 8 o'clock. Amazing, huh? And it looked black. This is what they want in our country. And you vote for them because you don't want to be racist. You don't want to be sexist. You don't want to be all the name calling they call you, so you vote for your own destruction. They got this woman, Karen Bass, as mayor of Los Angeles. Can you believe it? A black woman with a fro. This is from the Daily Mail. A Los, a Los Angeles father who pulled a gun on mass intruders when they tried to break into his luxury home has revealed he has been stripped of his firearm permit. According to the story, they're saying the guy tried to protect himself from the intruders now they're taking his Second Amendment away from him, according to this story. Watch it from ABC. Earlier this month, a local homeowner went viral after surveillance video captured him defending his home, pulling out his concealed carry weapon and firing at a pair of armed suspects. It was surreal, honestly. Uh, I never thought it was going to happen. I really didn't. Uh, born and raised in the Bronx, New York. And I came here for a better life. And I came here to uh, introduce my family to a better life in sunny California. And I never would have thought that this ever was going to happen in a million years. And that literally turned around. The first thing I thought, I feared for my family and I feared for my daughter. We live in a lawless society in, in California, in Los Angeles, and especially in the state with this, with this governor, the lack thereof. The people need to activate their rights. They need to stand up for the Second Amendment. They need to actually utilize their rights before it's taken away. Three months ago, my house was robbed. They took every piece of valuable thing we had in the home. And, I and no arrests were made then? There was no arrest made. There was no follow-up investigation. And I implored the captain, please. I said, I'm going to get killed. You're leaving me out here to dry. Just think about that. When I first moved to L.A. in 1968, I never imagined, not one order of a time, that it could become this way. And that I never imagined that black people, not all, not all, not all, but most, would be willing to be used to rob, steal, and kill and sneak up at people's homes like this and break in their homes. And I just, it just, it, you didn't think that was possible. And now the blacks are being used for destruction, just as they were created in South Africa in other parts of the world, not to make life better for themselves and others, but to destroy 
their lives and others. And they're like happy to do it, no problem. And you don't hear a loud outcry from you don't hear a loud outcry from anyone f- about it. You don't hear the uh, majority of black people crying out against this. No, this should not be this way because they're for it. The Daily Mail is reported in a video for the National Rifle Association. Vince Ritchie said he his concealed carrier license was revoked. The young man you just saw there. Ritchie said, after successfully defending my home, California has now decided to suspend my Second Amendment rights, according to the Daily Mail. And white people, I want, I've warned you for 30-something years that you were under attack. You better start speaking up. You ain't got time to be hating nobody else. You need to speak up. This is your country. You found it and created and built the greatest country with the help of God, a Judeo Christian nation, and now you're giving it up to the children of the lie. And I'm warning you now, I warned you before, as of right now, this very minute, moment, you should take your children, your white children, out of these schools. Because you have not done anything as parents for them to protect them. You're scared. Your children is getting brutalized by the blacks. Numbers of blacks are jumping on one white child and beating them nearly to death. In some places, some cases they die. If you're afraid of being looking like a so-called racist, which doesn't exist, because you're protecting your children, then just let them look like a racist. Why do you care anyway? No, you're going to sacrifice your children because you don't want to be looking like a racist. So you're going to send your kids to the school with these blacks so that you don't look like a racist. That doesn't change anything. They still see you that way because their eyes are closed. They're angry. And not at you, but at mama. And yearning for their father, but they told, they're told that it's you. They've been told that it's you. One last point that I get to your call. This is a sad situation. New York Post. Four teenagers who allegedly took part in the mob that fatally beat classmate Jonathan Lewis near their Las Vegas high school. Near their Las Vegas high school mate. Let me start over. Four teenagers from the New York Post. Four teenagers who allegedly took part in the mob that fatally beat classmate Jonathan Lewis near their Las Vegas high school, made their first appearance in adult court on Friday. Watch this from KTNV. Three of the eight teens accused in the deadly beating of a Rancho High School student make their initial Did court appearance at Clark County Justice Court. All three defendants will remain in custody at their current bail setting until the next court date. The court finds good cause to continue this hearing. In two separate hearings, the four teens accused in the deadly beating of the Rancho High School schoolmate Jonathan Lewis appeared in court Friday. Fever Dantral, Damien Hernandez, and Gianni Robinson appeared together, all handcuffed at the morning hearing, while the third, Trevian Randolph, appeared at an afternoon hearing because of a court scheduling conflict. Clark County Justice Court Judge Daniel Westmeyer ordered the teens to remain in jail without bail until their next court hearing on a Tuesday. The teens are facing one charge of murder each in the adult system. He also ruled the teens would be tried together. The court finds good cause to continue this hearing based on the nature of these charges. The group's initial appearance comes after eight teens were arrested this week in connection with the deadly beating of Lewis in an alleyway near Rancho High School. Investigators say the fight began over a pair of stolen headphones and a vape pen and was recorded on a video uploaded to social media. The video helped Metro Police track down eight of the ten suspects involved in the fatal attack. Mason, see how the, the, the boys that did the beating, according to the story, were black? 
They didn't say four black teams. They said four teams. That sounds so nice, huh? Had it been four white teams beating up on a black guy, they would say four white races, skinhead, uh, white supremacies. And that's all you'll be hearing. And the reason they're not saying four black teams because they need the blacks to continue to do what they're doing, to bring in chaos, chaos so that they can get money and power. Not the black getting it, they're getting it who are allowing this to happen. If you, if ever there was a time to speak up, now it's the time. Take your children out of those schools, black, I mean white people. This is what they do in the hood every day. Now you're getting a taste of it in your neighborhood. Cause you're busting. Now I'm about to make a statement that I do understand and I want to say I don't understand, but I do understand. But I want to say I don't understand. But I do understand. But I still want to make this statement. For the life of me, it's the darnest thing I ever see in my whole, whole bone days. And I grew up in Alabama. I grew up on a plantation. I worked the plantation proudly and happily. And I am aware of the Jim Crow laws, which did not affect black people. Um, I lived in a tin roof house. And when it rained, you could, it just made the most beautiful sound and it rocked you to sleep. There were times when we didn't, we would all leave home to go to church or somewhere, down, to go to town or something, get some grocery. And we didn't lock the doors. We closed the doors, but never locked the doors. I did not have to walk around with keys in my pocket, house keys and all that. White people and black people, for the most part, got along. Those who agreed on the same principles got along, and those who didn't, didn't, like all human beings do, right? Uh, I remember celebrations of Fourth of July and things like that. And sometimes we would travel up to Indiana to visit family members and travel back home to Alabama. And growing up, I literally saw my country as a strong country. And I wasn't thinking about, it. oh, we got a strong country. I was thinking about uh, the people of all races. And there were only a few races, I think, in my country at this time, mostly blacks and whites, I think. But because uh, I had never seen no Mexican and all that kind of stuff. So I grew up in all that. And then the so-called civil rights movement happened out of nowhere. It just all of a sudden just happened. I'm sure it was pretty well planned and thought through. And it was about this. It was the worst thing that happened to the blacks other than abortion because it brought in a division of the blacks and the whites that would not have happened had not it been for the so-called civil rights movement. It did not unite the race. We were already united. We ain't need to be united. But we were already united. But it divided the races. And as of this day, 2023, the races, blacks and whites, are more divided as a result of the so-called civil rights movement than any other time in the history of America. And from what I can see, I don't see any return. And they made up this lie, they keep repeating this lie, that blacks and whites were not getting along, getting along. Those that wanted to get along, got along. And they were like, oh, you had to go to all black schools, all and white people who went to white schools, that was fine. It wasn't a big deal. It was encouraging and making people be and do the best that they can do. And had the civil rights movement not happened, America would have all gotten along based on the same principles. 
and I hate using those words because those words are misused now, but a belief in God. And there were blacks and whites who believed in God, and there were blacks and whites who didn't. The blacks and whites who believed in God got along, and the blacks and whites who did not believe in God did not get along. That's just the way the ball rolls, right? And everybody understood it. I don't know how much I've thought about it, but I never imagined that white people would cave into the blacks because I'd never seen white people caving in before. And I just never, I just didn't see that. It didn't seem like that was possible. And we all knew and know now that if it wasn't for the white man, there would be no America. There would be no America. There would be Indians running around smoking peyote, killing one another. Ha! Living in the woods and tent nets fighting each other. It wouldn't be America. Everybody going after the white people, especially white men. Look how they're going after Donald Trump. And all Donald Trump is doing is trying to make America better. He, that's all he's doing. But white people are getting beat up. The kids are getting beat up in the schools, the, uh, along the roadside, along the roadside, uh, at work, everywhere. White people are just getting torn down. Isn't that amazing? We're losing our country for one reason and one reason only. White people who founded the country will not stand up. And God gave them the grace and the know-how and the talent to build the greatest country on this side of heaven. Here's an example of an attack on white people. This is from news.vt.edu. Author teacher and anti-racist advocate Tim Wise has lectures internationally and, and has trained corporate, government, law enforcement, and, and medical industry professionals on methods for dismantling racism. He's training people on how to dismantle racism how do you dismantle something that doesn't exist? And it's all geared toward white people. Let's see that guy picture. That's him right there. That's Tim Y. He's a liar. I think you talked to him before. Hate said he didn't think I talked to him. When Hate was producer, he refused to come on my show. My show. He wrote a book called White Like Me. That racism is a made-up word. It's just a word made up. The one thing I do want to tell white people, you can get and take back your country, but you got to drop the anger. Because if you're angry at the attack, you won't be able to function. You're no better than the attacker. You will never, ever, ever, ever. Now, intellectually, you may think you have, but you ain't going to enter into the kingdom of heaven as long as you have resentment on your heart. In life, you cannot hold anything against anyone for any reason. There's never a reason to be angry. This is from alternate.org by Tim Wise, according to this article. For all y'all rich folks, I read it as it's written, for all y'all rich folks, Enjoy that champagne. Oh, doesn't that make you want to go out and get a glass of champagne right now? <laughs> you ever had champagne? I have not. I've never drank any alcohol. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, beta. I have had kombucha, though, which is fermented, so it's close. Well, I don't know who kombucha is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know much about history, and I don't know much about kombucha. But for all y'all rich folks, enjoy that champagne. You need to drink up and quickly. You need to drink up and quickly and heavily, heavily, H-E-A-V-I-L-Y, heavily. 
because your time is limited. For all y'all rich folks, because your time is limited, party while you can, but mind the loud clock ticking. Party while you can, but mind the loud clock ticking away in the corner of your consciousness. Drink up, drink fast, but mind the loud clock ticking away in the corner of your consciousness. The clock that reminds you how little time you have. The clock that reminds you how little time you have left. Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. Drink up. Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. It's over, white people. That's from Tim Wise. Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. Drink up all you rich folks. The attack on the white people is mind-blowing to me. And there are white people cheering on their own and your demise. Here's a perfect example of it. From E-Notes, in June 1998, so-called President Bill Clinton presented a speech on diversity. I put the so-called in there because it is so-called, but they didn't write so-called. Clinton, Bill Clinton presented a speech on diversity at Portland State University. This is a white man supporting destroying other white people I ain't going to see white people cheering it on. Watch this from Clinton's library. Driving force behind our increasing diversity is a new large wave of immigration. It is changing the face of America. They have strengthened our economy, enriched our culture, renewed our promise of freedom and opportunity for all. But now we are being tested again by a new wave of immigration larger than any in a century, far more diverse than any in our history. Each year, nearly a million people come legally to America. Today, nearly one in 10 people in America was born in another country. One in five school children are from immigrant families. Today, largely because of immigration, there is no majority race in Hawaii or Houston or New York City. Within five years, there will be no majority race in our largest state, California. In a little more than 50 years, there will be no majority race in the United States. No other nation in history has gone through demographic change of this magnitude in so short a time. I believe new immigrants are good for America. They are revitalizing our cities. They are building our new economy. They are energizing our culture and broadening our vision of the world and reminding us all of what it truly means to be an American. That's a bald-faced lie. America is not greater or better as a result of immigrants, illegal or illegal immigrants. We're worse off than any other time. Supporting the demise of white people, from white people. And these illegal aliens and these immigrants are not coming here to work. They're coming here for free stuff. According to the New York Post, the latest data shows only about 2% of the tens of thousands of migrants who have poured into New York City have applied for work authorization. Only 2%, according to the New York Post. How is that better for America? These people are not even applying for work, and they don't have to because they're getting it free. Bill Clinton is a bald-faced lie then, and unless he's repented and came back and said I was wrong, said I was wrong, he still is a liar. 
and white people are under attack. And look at the white children getting beat up in these black schools by the black gang. A bunch of gang blacks, thugs, on one white person, stomping them and knocking them out and killing them. And then the news media might report it, and they'll say, uh, a fight, a bunch of kids, teenager. They don't say black or white, but it was the other way around. They would say a bunch of white, racist, white supremacists beat up a black child. It's hard on the black man in America. White people. It ain't going to get better. It ain't going to stop on its own. Evil does not stop on its own. You got to deal with evil in the right way. Within yourself, and you'll see how to deal with it outside of yourself, inside of others. The only hope for our country right now is Donald Trump. CNN, this is a soundbite uh, 21D. Uh, CNN, Donald Trump wants to revive many of, of his immigration policies. I'm sorry, 21D, yeah. Donald Trump wants to revive many of his immigration policies to restrict both legal and illegal immigration. If elected in 2024, he is planning a widespread expansion of his immigration policy, including rounding up undocumented undocumented immigrants already in the U.S. and placing them in detention camps to await deportation. Watch this from Forbes. And it's. Job number one will be to stop the invasion on our southern border. We had the best numbers we've ever had in the history of our country, and now we have the worst numbers probably in the history of the world. There's never been a border like this. When you see what's coming in from mental institutions and prisons all over the world. And they're coming from China. 16% come from China. Why are they all young and strong, mostly men? It's got to stop, and we've got to have the largest mass deportation effort in history we're going to the inauguration is you're down and you're walking up these beautiful stairs to capitol everything's so beautiful as i'm walking up i'll be signing about four or five different documents i'm not going <laughs> to wait to get to the office. i may even have a very tiny little desk put on the 20th stair <laughs> that's the man we need back in the white house Donald Trump will make America great again. Amazing! Amazing. I am in L.A., and not just L.A. now. The traffic is a mess, a real mess. And I realize before now, but I realized that the government wants it that way. I noticed that everything that the government get involved, gets involved with, it goes to hell in a handbasket. But when private sectors are running things, it runs more smoothly and quickly and most of the time properly. But when the government gets involved, you can know it's over. Happy days are over. The government whole entire plan for life is to control you, to upset you and control you. That is the plan of the government. Isn't that amazing? And I want to show you an example of what they call holiday traffic in Los Angeles and give you an example of what your government want it to be. It's what the government want it. They want it this way. They want you fighting in airports. They want you fighting on airplanes. They want you frustrated and fighting on the road. They want it that way because as long as you're fighting, they're taking away your rights because they know now you're upset and whatever they suggest, you're going to go for it. Watch this clip from Fox concerning the holiday traffic in Los Angeles. 
Live look at traffic. This is that Looking annual here. shot we see every year. Oh Sky Fox gosh. over the 10 and the 405. Look at that. Oof. AAA predicts more than 49 million people will drive this holiday. Wednesday night, expected to be the busiest day on the road. Uh, the worst time estimated to be between 2 and 6 in the afternoon. Now, we know the traffic is, is almost always bad at this time That's in true. this stretch. Uh, but this picture really does uh, say a lot. Isn't that amazing? And that's what the government wants. It's a mess. But that's the traffic in Los Angeles. They want you angry, frustrated, and confused. And then they do, once they get you in that mode, mood, mode, they say, go see a therapist. Because you have these fake therapists. Oh, they, we did a, 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 a statistic, and people are depressed. They are angry, and they're seeing therapists. And medication going through the roof. It's all about the conf money. You ain't got to go visit family every Thanksgiving. They don't even like one another anyway. Every Thanksgiving, the business day in the country and you get busy, and you hustle and bustle, and you freak out in the long lines. And by the time you do make a home, you're worn out wherever home is, and you're ready to come back. Because once you believe a lie, that's it. The thrill comes up from believing that lie. Ain't nobody going to stop you, no matter what they say to you. They got you fighting, and they're getting what they want. And remember yesterday we told you that these illegal aliens, they ain't coming here looking for no work. Is you crazy? They're coming here for free stuff. Law, and y'all put the black people in charge of your country. I don't know what to think about this guy. According to Politico, as New York City faces an increasingly expensive migrant crisis, Eric Adam is calling for billions in budget cuts to city services. Watch this from Fox. Learning more about the steep budget cuts coming from Mayor Eric Adams, calling for 5% cuts in every department, including public safety. This as he continues to make a public appeal for the federal government to step up and help offset the cost of the migrant crisis. The national government should be picking up this tab and it should not be coming out of the backs of everyday New Yorkers. That is wrong and that is what is happening. The budget cuts mean that the police force would be reduced to under 30,000, the lowest number in decades. Plus, impose a hiring freeze on the NYPD. Other departments will also be impacted. The FDNY will be asked to reduce overtime costs. Any civilian vacancies will be eliminated, as well as light duty firefighter positions. As for the Department of Education, $1 billion will be slashed over the next two years. Middle schoolers will see reduced hours for the summer rising program, and thousands of pre K spots will be cut. City libraries will not be spared from cuts. Library leaders say starting next month, most of the branches will be forced to close on Sunday. Amazing. They, think about this. They're cutting, they say, but the illegals are all right there. They're right there on the ground. <laughs> Why not put them back on the bus and take them to the border and throw them back over there? Hey, bye, y'all. Get out of here. But the American people have to suffer. The government should be paying, he said. No, the government should not. That's our money. You know, you've heard the elections are coming up this coming year. You think this year was bad? Next year, as close as the election get, it's just going to get worse. But it doesn't have to be worse for you. You are your world. You are responsible for you. And um, it doesn't have to be bad for you. Some of you know that the great white hope, Donald Trump, is running for president again. 
And the last thing that the children of the lie want is Donald Trump. They don't want things to be right. Even the right old Republicans don't want him. And by the way, a quick reminder, we only have one party system now, and that's Democrat. Democrats and Republican Party are one. They're the same. I was trying to think of five things that the Republicans have done to make America better, to stop what's going on, and I couldn't think of one. I could not think of one. I can think of things they've done to make sure America is destroyed, like supporting money over to Ukraine, to Israel, to all these other places. They're giving away the money to every other country under the pretense of helping them while at home, nothing. Zero. And they know Donald Trump is going to change that. I want you to hear the things that they were saying, some of the things they were saying about the great white hope Donald Trump. Uh, let's, let's check out MSNBC to see what they are saying about the great white hope. Watch this from MSNBC and The View. Watch this. I have a responsibility to, to really to tune out the voices of of the haters of of the people that are constantly uh, double shilling and triple for him. checking and shilling for him and suggesting Sick. that somehow they're being biased bending over backwards treating him like a normal candidate he's not a normal candidate he is running to end american democracy as we know it he's an authoritarian if you want to be fair then you will frame this uh, as uh, joe biden being the candidate that supports american democracy and donald trump a candidate who supports a new form of government here, this authoritarian, uh, because he will do, he will get away with, he will imprison, he will execute whoever he's allowed to imprison, execute, uh, 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 drive from the country. No doubt about it. Amazing. No doubt about it. They lied about the president. They're sitting there and just lying about him because they don't want you voting for him. They don't want America to be great again. Why can't y'all see this? And you're going to hear more and more and more lies about him the closer you get to uh, the election. And they're going to play all kinds of stuff to deceive you. And if you're not a free thinker, if you're not watching what's going on, you're going to fall for it. The last person they want back in the White House to make America great again is the great white hope. And the other day I was talking to you about white people should speak up. Well, apparently, there is at least another white man or white person speaking up. And speak up without the anger. That way you don't make stupid mistakes where they can lock you up and take away your rights. There's a right way to speak up, and that way is without the anger. Overcome the anger. Speak up, but don't resent. This is from OutKick. Here's an example of somebody speaking up. The UFC is the only major sport league that doesn't police what athletes say or pressure them to adopt certain politics. Dana White is certainly one of the leaders in sports who is not beholden to corporate sponsors. Why is this from... Theo Vaughn. Watch this. This happened to me. I posted a video for Trump, Mm -hmm. right, Mm -hmm. on my personal social media. And one of our big sponsors called and said, take that down. You know what I said? Go f*** yourself. Yeah. (laughs) You vote for whoever you want to vote for, and I'll vote for whoever I want to vote for. That's how this works. I don't even care who you're voting for. It's none of my business. Well, f*** you. Yeah. Don't ever call me and tell me who to vote for. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people feel in fear these days, you know? A lot of people feel in fear that if they don't vote for certain people, they're going to lose their jobs. It sounds insane. It sounds yeah. just like... Well, it'll keep happening unless more people stand up for themselves. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. At least one white man speaking up. Or oh, another one. I know others now. You got to start speaking up just so be angry. Anger enslaves you. It controls you. It's an evil emotion. And this country was built on love. You still think that Nikki Haley is cool? I hear people sometimes, especially women, believing that Nikki Haley, of all the females on this side of heaven, would make for a good president. Now, you know you got to be on pot. Something got to be wrong with you. Nikki Haley is the, 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 the female that took down the Confederate flag. Why would you vote for a rhino like that? Plus, you're a woman. We don't need a woman to run out of the country. Look what's happening as a result of women taking it. Well, they're not taking it. Men giving women so-called leadership roles in the homes, the schools, the government, police, mayors, and all that. A mess! Do what you want, but Nikki Haley is not the one. Daily Dot is reporting. N Nikki Haley took questions at a campaign stop in New Hampshire. One of the questions came from a young girl in the crowd who was wearing a Nikki Haley hat. Watch this. This is so interesting. Watch this from X. I love your hat. <laughs> Thank you. One of your guys gave it to me for free. <laughs> Wow. I love your hat with a big fake smile. Thank you. One of your guys gave it to me for free. <laughs> and Haley said they're looking cheap. I love your hat. And she always talking about she's the first woman this. She's the first woman from a a uh, color woman or something dumb like that. She's the first this and first that. Aren't you sick of that? Nikki Haley is a warmonger female that should not be have any part in our government unless she wanted to be the secretary. You know, not, not like, I mean like secretary in the front office. Not like secretary of treasury and all that kind of mess. This is why Christianity is easily destroyed because it's just about nothing. It's all emotional. It's all about nothing. Isn't that amazing? All that screaming and carrying on. What a mess! And now Allah U Abba are taking over. Why are you screaming and yelling and carrying on? Okay. The world is hell. But the hell is inside the people of the world, right? So they bring the hell come through the people. Every human being that has anger is living in hell, pure hell. And they think that when they die, they go into hell, they're already in hell. How do you see Thanksgiving? What are you thinking about? I see it as like a like a real American holiday where we're supposed to Consider what we're grateful for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, serious. But I'm serious. I think of it as like Christian <laughs> and... It's like what? Christian. Oh, okay. And a stark contrast to the bitterness and f phony victimhood that we, we're seeing everywhere today. And what are you grateful for? Life and health. <laughs> and like a, a nice job nice amazing <laughs> how do you see Thanksgiving I, I think I feel the same way as in like the American part it's interesting I grew up I had my first Thanksgivings in America I had my first Thanksgivings in America 
Did they have Thanksgiving in Canada? They did too, but I had them here first. It's a different date. <laughs> it's a different date. It's true. Oh, they have it, it in October. Oh, it's not today. Correct. Oh. But um, what I'm grateful for, I'm grateful like a sinner. <laughs> I'm grateful I woke up. I'm grateful. I'm grateful <laughs> for what I have. <laughs> I'm grateful like a sinner. Yeah, because I keep somehow getting chances for everything, second chances, and and everything, and and it's in, you know it uh, feels like the most honest thing, honest thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that doesn't mean I'm not talking about a woman. People at home, <laughs> I keep getting second chances. Give me a chance. <laughs> we just finished with that call. I'm not talking about a woman. <laughs> Amazing. You're just in talking general. About se- you're talking about like a second woman? No. <laughs> just in general, <laughs> just life, you know. Amazing. Joel, what do you, how do you see Thanksgiving? Um, well, I never actually looked at it in that way that they're speaking of, only because I wasn't taught that. All I seen it as um, was um, a time that I got to spend with the family and eat food and just overeat. <laughs> That's the only way I always, that's always how I looked at Thanksgiving. And it kind of feels kind of nice, you know, it feels like a a nice, fun holiday in the air. But I never thought about America or anything like that. I just enjoy spending the time with the family and eating a bunch of food. Amazing. Yeah. I'm just grateful for that, you know, God has just led me every every place that I'm at in my life. God has just led me here and... I can tell that just in different things, whether it be back here or whether it be at the studio or just places in my life that he's continuing to lead me. And everywhere I go, I know that that's where I'm supposed to be. And uh, I see that clear. Excuse me. I see that clear. And when I see that, um, I know that um, I'm making closer and closer steps to, you know, the ideal, well, I don't even want to say ideal place I'm supposed to be, but just being clear on on where I'm going in life in general. So I'm just grateful that God is continuing to plan the steps, lead the steps. Amazing. Uh, Hassan, how do you see Thanksgiving? Yeah, just kind of like thankful for like reflecting on like George Washington and uh, Samuel Adams and <laughs> oh, Lord. and stuff like that <laughs> but also like what Nick said you know it's like yeah I am grateful too for like more opportunities uh, to overcome and to self examine and you know it's good to reflect on having that and kind of I'm grateful for having people in my life when I reflect on my life that showed a lot of patience with me and showed a lot of uh, mercy. And I look at it and I say, you know, I'm always pointing the finger like Christianity is not real, it's performative, no one's ever really shown Christianity. (laughs) But actually, dealing with me and having patience with me, there's been a lot of people that actually have shown Christianity. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, just grateful for the patience and mercy, I think, of, uh, of different relationships and mentors and different people in my life, so, yeah. Just another day to overcome, like Nick said. Just the opportunity to. <laughs> I just saw myself on the camera. It's like, look, I'm a mess. Look at me. Hey, I'm th- somebody's watching out. I think maybe. <laughs> Amazing. Um, nice. All Americans, Milani and I would like to wish you a blessed and joyful Thanksgiving. Nearly 400 years ago, the Pilgrims gathered with Native Americans to give thanks to their first harvest. Just over a year before, in September of 1620, the Pilgrims set sail on the Mayflower to settle a new land where they could live and worship freely. They came to this continent with few resources, but rich in faith, courage, and dreams. They endured a treacherous voyage across the ocean and long days inside the ship's cabin as storms raged wild. Then, when the Pilgrims arrived at Plymouth, their first act was to pray. On their first Thanksgiving, they came together to rejoice after their harvest and praise God for His provision. Since then, Americans have always remembered the blessings of freedom and the glory of God. Today, we give thanks for all of the pilgrims, pioneers, and patriots who have gone before us 
and for all those warriors who have kept us safe and free. We all share the same heart, the same home, and the same glorious destiny. And we are all bound together by the common bonds of love, loyalty, and affection that make our country into a wonderful home. And we ask for God's continued blessings on this magnificent land. We're very, very happy on this Thanksgiving Day. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. Nice. It looks like he's already the president. Amazing. Uh, talking about po talking about politics at Thanksgiving dinner, it could be a mess. CBS, as families gather for Thanksgiving, some may be wondering how to avoid fights about politics. Watch this from CBS. Some people may be thinking about how to avoid awkward conversations at dinner. In a new piece for USA Today, columnist and etiquette expert Stephen Petro anticipates political divisiveness will find a seat at the dinner table. Ahead of the holiday season, he suggests revisiting the, quote, fundamentals of how we talk and eat without developing indigestion. Say whether you're going to have, maybe you're going to have a politics-free zone tomorrow. That's fine. Or you're going to have an hour beforehand where it's okay to talk about politics. But set the rules and then host. It's kind of hard, but you're going to have to enforce it. If someone starts acting out, that Aunt Bertha, we all know her, take her into the kitchen. Don't embarrass her. But say, you know what? You're going a little bit too far. I want everyone to be comfortable at my table. And it's really the one oh, time of year well. most of us get together and get to break bread. Mm -hmm. And that's important. So let's listen. Let's not use any name calling. And um, let's try to have the conversations that we want to have. They may be about politics. That's fine. It's okay to disagree. It's just we don't want to disagree the wrong way. <laughs> what, what, what a, a mama. Man. What? I said, what a mama. I'm telling you. Can you imagine going to think every day that you have to act that way? I am the etiquette expert around here. I wonder if he has a degree. Pro he sounds like he has he a has, degree. He definitely sounds like The more degrees you have, the dumber you are. Indeed. Without a doubt. That's a fact. What a mess. <laughs> and you think that's something. Check out this headline from USA Today. How to avoid talking politics at Thanksgiving. Consider a no MAGA allowed sign. What? Po <laughs> politics has never been a good subject for family gatherings. But in the age of Trump, it has become more explosive than your drunk uncle adding just a bit more oil to the turkey fryer. Amazing. When I go to Thanksgiving, I'm going to take truckloads of truck sign. Nice. I'm going to put them all over their houses, in the house and everywhere. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> Trump is a man of love and truth. Yeah. And both of these, that other Bad. one, with the other one with the mama guy talking yeah. to that gal who's like Hispanic or whatever, right. part Indian. It also said, in the age of Trump. Right. They're acting, they're the ones who hate the truth. They hate masculinity. That's yeah. what they hate. What's Trump got to say about this? That's a good that's question. That's a good. That's a million dollar <laughs> turkey question. <laughs> and yes, together we will make America great again. I rest my case. Why we want to have a nice conversation at Turkey about that? A man, Amazing! A Amazing. man of love and truth. Yeah. And unity. What the? Terrible. Now pass the sweet potato pie. Yeah. So this year, you know, it's a little, now that I'm thinking about it, it's a little lackluster compared to the pie uh, competition, but it's an eggnog, apple cider juice uh, <laughs> competition. So. <laughs> oh, that is exciting. Exciting, big, big holiday night. And so, what we gonna have to do? Shake it up. What? Put the mic on. We have to hug. Thanksgiving. <laughs> James, James, Hassan, and Sean got to squeeze together as best as possible for the shot to to make sense. Oh, but there we're going to break. We'll do it. The three must Treasure chest is opening on D Live. The three mustard tears. Okay, yeah. So we got it all poured up. We got the. Yeah. The nog and the apple cider, you know, because let me sh yeah, show you. You mean pulled up? Yeah, it's a big, it's a big, um, 
It's a duel, you know. It's like, like muddy water right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a special cider, it's apple delicious. cider. So here we go. So I said we do the. I think we got to do the nog first. I've never had eggnog in my whole life, so this is gonna be. Brand I'm gonna new. do the apple cider oh, first. So okay, but then let's not, do that. Let's do I that throw, first. We all gotta up. do the same thing first. Wait a minute. All right. Let me ask before he drink. Does it have any peanuts or anything in the inside? We'll find out. Um, <laughs> All right. Well, hold on. Wait. Oh, because you, you're allergic? No, he is. Oh. Oh. Well, then no. Then don't we'll do it. Out. We'll find out. We'll find out. No, no, don't. It's not that shit. No, 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 we'll no don't do out. that. Fine. We'll just blame you. I don't. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, <laughs> it'll be funny. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> do it. It'll be funny. <laughs> For the gram. It don't matter. He black anyway. <laughs> I watched my competitor get get choked out on on the internet on stream so I can watch Joel Friday get his throat close up on plus stream it, plus it. <laughs> it'll be funny plus Joel has lived being a black person he has lived way beyond his uh, above his days <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I never thought I'd leave the hood. I never thought I'd live to be twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Red solo cup. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're so going. So who, who are we doing first? Egg the dog. apple Egg cider. Dog. I'm doing apple cider. I'm an individual. Hey, you're allowed well, to do that. We all got to do the same well, thing. Well, then let's what go the... apple cider first. Okay. Apple cider. Yeah. yeah it's are a, we it's testing a, it? Apple cider is a natural palate we're, cleanser. Are we yeah. testing it? Yeah. Yeah. We're just you know we're Tasting we're selling the the. Debate. Which one's better? Oh, okay. Yeah. Why, is, why is my apple cider thick? Something's going wrong here. Here we go. Yeah, apple it's cider. Not, it's, it's not Martinelli's. Why well, Sean, there, Sean's allergic to apples. Why is there fentanyl oh, in mine? It has. <laughs> it's apple cider with the mother in it. Mm. This is apple juice. This is mm, good. <laughs> well, we'll just, you know, we'll we'll like. Wow. I'm pleasantly surprised. This is so good. That's yeah. good, right? It's, well, it's not, not, it's it's not fermented or alcoholic. It's good. <laughs> Was I not supposed like to chug it? Like yeah. You like a shot? Oh, I just man. went hard. It's huh? not sparkly. You like it? Was I not he supposed drank, to chug he it? Drank the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, you he can. Bottoms it. up. So, Empty cup. He loved it. You know how Mexican loves a drink. Something about the red cup encourages you to chug it. Mexican. I disavow. Red solo apple cider, you know, Not nice for the I'm a cri- I'm a Christian. <laughs> Wait, so right. are you in the, the eggnog now? I'm, I'm scared. All right, yeah. It's delicious, man. Yeah, that's nice apple well, cider. We already hit the nog. Good yeah, for all doing seasons. Doing that's really. my daily dose of sugar. Halloween, right. Thanksgiving, and Christmas season. And this is to all y'all out there. Yes. Which Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Did you already hit Salud. the nog? Cheers yeah. to the prost. The cider, this is the eggnog. To the family. Eggnog now. Okay. All right, now eggnog. Holiday nog. Damn. <laughs> That's gross. <Ooh>. Uh, <laughs> gross. Hey, this is pretty good. Mm. Nice. I'm going to stick to my pumpkin nice. pie. <laughs> <laughs> the, the adult in the room is non-participatory. Pumpkin mm. he's pie. Having, he's having pumpkin pie and pecan pie. He make everybody at the party feel like alcoholics. <laughs> yeah. But this is not alcoholic, right? Pumpkin. Mm-mm. Why are you drunk? I can tell why people mix. I'm drunk on life. <laughs> oh. Energy was... from God. Oh. Mm. The Holy Spirit. I'm oh. filled with the Spirit. He drunk. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm filled with Nog. He's a I, can, <laughs> I can tell why people mix the Nog with alcohol, because it, it does have like a, you can tell it complements yeah. the, the liquor. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know. But. You going to put some in your alcohol tonight? We'll find out. <laughs> he, he stopped drinking once he was legal age. <laughs> No, it is about it. Uh, no, no. <laughs> it was past that. <laughs> and Sean is eating uh, oh. pumpkin pie and pecan pecan pie. And not Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> Which we're, each, the, we're each supposed to try it. <laughs> exactly. Oh, so that's pumpkin he's not touching? It's already gone, so... Don't I'm show that pumpkin. on the camera. <laughs> okay, well, anyway. <laughs> we had a, a Sunday... My vote is the, eggnog. Sunday after the fellowship, Maybe. we had a... A thank you a meal here at the building. And the ladies and some of the other people brought pies and cakes and things, and it was delicious. And that's what Sean having now. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Amazing. That's the last of it? So. Uh, no, there's one more piece in there. Nice. There's a plenty of pecan in there, too. Do you want to do a pecan pie in there? I know. <laughs> pecans? That pumpkin was so good. Yeah, you, know, you want to have some pecans? Can you have pecans? I'm not, I don't really like pecan or pecan, whatever. Whichever. You are so fitified. <laughs> That's that thirty percent white. I'm scared. Uh, eggnog. Oh yeah, here you go. Just wash it. Down. Better you safe than just sorry. Out the jug. Probably it. Manufactured no, I don't mind in risking getting I rabies. <laughs> 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 Want to drink some water? Anyway, what? Well, 
that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, delicious. That's good, right? How so is this too, but yeah. did uh did did your dog clean my glass or something? <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, these are sterilized. These are everything is uh How your dog got rabies. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got. I think I got rabies. I might be giving it to Sandy. Right, you got bit by another dog. Yeah, protecting Sandy like a mama. Yeah, have you drank water since then? <laughs> <laughs> Just eggnog. <like> Strictly <laughs> nog <laughs> until the New Year. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I guess this was a little lackluster compared to the pies last year. But <laughs> thank, you. Thank, yeah, you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you it was so nice, Hassan. Amazing, and this is really, really good. Thank you. <clears throat> really, really good. Sean, you didn't tell us how you see Thanksgiving. You weren't in here. It's always been my favorite holiday. Were you here? No. You oh, okay. How do you see Thanksgiving, and what are you thankful for? Uh, it's always been my favorite holiday. Um, this is my first Thanksgiving spent without spending with my family, extended oh. family, too. You know, oh. I got nine nine cousins, and... Uh, aunts and uncles and all that. So we've obviously been getting together since I was born for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Always liked Thanksgiving better. Yeah. Um, just the sights, the smells, the colors, the food, the drinking. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Irish. And, um, yeah, mostly the food. It's just an incredible meal. Yeah. You know? Amazing. And, and uh, just a time to be thankful. And so, what is it like not being with your family for the first time? Well, I'll be there for Christmas. So. <laughs> boo. I thought that was a sad sound. It was actually a boo, my bad. <laughs> and I know your dad is uh, hunting. Yep, he got a nice deer. Oh, I should have put the deer in the uh, photos. Yeah. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow. But yeah, my dad got a nice, nice big buck this year. Amazing. So, uh, good for him. So I'll I be saw, having some venison this year for uh, Thanksgiving. I saw that, that that deer. Oh, my deer. The deer that he shot made me want to go home and kill some deers. Yeah. Because I like hunting. Yep. It's fun. Amazing. Yep. This is from Britannica. Blaise Pascal, a French mathematician, religious philosopher, and author, watch this from School of Life, School of Life. It is still tragically sometimes assumed that the best way to cheer someone up is to tell them that everything will be all right. We need only read a few pages of the book known as The Pensée by the great French 17th century philosopher Blaise Pascal to appreciate how entirely misguided this approach must be. His mother died when he was three, he had few friends, he was a hunchback, and he was always ill. Luckily, he was recognized from an early age to be a genius. The purpose of the book was to convert readers to God, and Pascal felt the best way to do this was to evoke everything that was terrible about life. Pascal begins by telling us that earthly happiness is an illusion, but he's especially keen to point out how much we hate being on our own, thinking and exploring our own condition. People will do anything rather than consider their dreadful reality, he thinks. Pascal is perhaps best known for this aphorism of genius. All of man's unhappiness comes from his inability to stay peacefully alone in his room. Pascal's bitter conclusion, what is man a nothing compared to the infinite? How hollow and foul is the heart of man? The very best we may hope to do in these circumstances, Pascal suggests, is to face the desperate facts of our situation head on. Man's greatness comes from knowing he is wretched. Wow. That's so deep. I can hardly stand it. Nice. That's what all of y'all for thanking me from all of us. That is amazing. What do you say to that? That's perfect. Return to God. Be alone. What happened to the French? Shout out to the French. They were afraid to be alone. And so now the guy's with a 70-year-old as a 45-year-old. The French president, Macron. Amazing. That's a cool, that's a cool um, story. I like that. Indeed. All of humanity's problems come from man's inability to sit alone in a room. All of humanity's problems come from man's inability 
to sit alone in the room. That reminded me of last Sunday when I asked people to sit in a room for four minutes. Yeah. It was all screwed up. <laughs> 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 they couldn't do it for four minutes. Yeah. So I want to challenge you all out there during today and this week and sit alone in your room for four minutes. All I ask is four minutes without music, without food, without phone calls, without looking on your Internet thing, without anything, just for four minutes. And let me know how it goes. I know some persecuted whites who are sitting in solitary for however long. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they're taking it right. I think uh, I th- some of them are working to be better from oh, it, not you, bitter. What's it, uh, Owen yeah. Schroyer. That's right. Many a... Uh, many uh, bless Owen yeah. Schroyer. Many a My white. My friend, our friend. Uh, but sit alone because right now you're living an illusion. It's an illusion. Amazing. And when it said man's, it means whip, man's in the middle, women and men. You used to not have to say, people used to know it meant women too. But learn to be alone. Sit alone with nothing to do. Do nothing for four minutes. And then you find yourself going longer, but four minutes from now. You don't believe Jesus is God. Thank God I don't believe that I'll be stuck like you are. But anyway, they know not what they do. Here's an example of that. ABC. The Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade was temporarily halted when a group of about 30 pro-Palestine protesters ran into the streets and glued themselves to the pavement. Watch this from ABC and Independent. Breaking news, and this is something that we told you was a possibility that was going to happen. Um, We have been told that a small group of pro-Palestinian demonstrators uh, have glued their hands to the parade route. This is at 49th and 6th specifically. I believe this is the shot of the scene there right now. Um, It has temporarily paused the parade. It has impacted the parade, so they're on it. They're on high alert. Palestine and planet, land, burn, nation. For a race for Palestine and planet. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. <laughs> They know not what they do. They need to be arrested, but make all that mess in the streets. All that paint and stuff. You riot in the streets. You do all that. That ain't working for you at all. It's just a thrill. And when the thrill is gone, nothing is left. Now you got to look for more thrill. The thrill is gone. The thrill is gone. Gone away from me. The thrill is, when the thrill is gone, you got to find more thrill. If ever we needed you, Lord, it's now. Folks, there is an evil. There is a devil. And other devils are brainwashing you in order to control you. And you go out and fight a battle that they have created for personal gain. And you don't get nothing from it but a thrill. And you go home at night and you cry. You go home at night when the thrill is gone and the lights are out and you cry. You're lonely. You have fear. What can I do next for another thrill? At night, you're lonely. At night, you got to get high or drunk or something to forget. Looking for another thrill. And the people pat you on the back, and they tell you how wonderful you are. You did a great job, they say. And then you cry some more. Then you're lonely some more. And then they give you a trophy. This award go to Mama Joe for destroying the streets, destroying businesses. And you laugh, and they applaud, 
And then you go home at night with your little trophy. You look at it, you set it on the dresser drawer there or hang it on the wall, and then you cry. Then you're lonely. Then you have fear. Then you feel like nothing. And you're looking for another thrill. I know I'll get me a different woman. I'll make baby with another woman. And you go out and make babies. And then you cry some more. Something is wrong with life. It's not working, you say. But instead of looking within, you look without. Never finding that peaceful place. The kingdom of heaven is within. It's not without. There's nothing, no body, no thrills, no pat on the back, no applause, no money, no living quarter, nothing that's going to give you peace. You can have a dozen women and a dozen, like those black ears of like folks. You have a dozen women and a dozen babies, and you still cry at night. You look over, she laying there snoring. Or she looks over, and you're laying there snoring. And then you cry. <laughs> Who is this? How did I end up with this one? I thought this was going to bring me peace. And then you cry some more. You must be born again of the Father. When God said, all who are born of the woman must be born of the Father, it wasn't a joke. Ain't nothing else going to work but that. All the hooping and hollering in the churches ain't going to do it. Reading the Word ain't going to do it. Praying to the devil, pretending you're praying to God ain't going to do it. Becoming a star ain't going to do it. You must return to the Father. And the mothers, until they overcome, they work overtime, undertime, around time. They spend time trying to figure out how to keep you from the Father, from your earthly father. And it's not them, but it's the hell in them. It's their God in them, Satan. He's causing them to do it. And you go to court and you fight with them over your children because you are emotionally tied to them too, and it controls you. You're getting a false sense of identity from it, and you call yourself daddy. I'm their father. I'm their daddy. Oh, I don't care what happened. I'm going to court and fight for them. And then you lose, because even if you do get visitation right, the daughter of the devil makes sure that doesn't work out for you. The battle is a spiritual battle. And then these people of color going into the white world, Western world, they look over, they see bright lights, big cities, they're like, what the, I want that. And they go over illegally and some even legally, and they destroy the bright lights. Because the problem with them, they take their problems with them. And then they cry at night. I, I believe I heard Hate mention this on the Hate Report. These people fighting over climate change because somebody else told them to fight over climate change. They can tell you what that even means. Don't worry about the weather. God got the weather. If it's changing every year, Winter, spring, summer, and fall. And ain't nothing nobody can do about that. If you want to help, don't throw a paper on the ground. Put it in the trash. You don't need someone to tell you that. And don't wear your pajamas on the airplane. Put on some clothes like you got some sense. And they go into the white world. And they attack the white man after he allowed them, allows them to go into his world, his beautiful world, and they destroy it. Riots in Ireland. Same thing that's happening here. This is from X. 
Irish prime minister says the government is very white. The government is very white. And for some reason now, that's against the law. You could be very black. You could be, the government can be very black. It could be very uh, Mexican color. It could be very Chinese color. It could be very Asian color. It could be very whatever their color they have, but anything but very white. Anything but very white. Uh uh-uh. uh. That's too white. The Irish Prime Minister says the government is very white. And that is, and that it very much need to change. The government is very white and it needs to change. To what? To dark hair. Why is this from X? They didn't say dark hair. I I'm saying. I agree that. with the deputy on is the need to target, set a target to have a, a number of people from ethnic minorities in areas of the public service. We have a health service that's very diverse, although less so as you go up towards the senior positions, uh, not so much in the Gardaí, not so much in the Defence Forces, not so much in the education sector, as the deputy mentioned, not at all in the civil service, which is very white, uh, including the Department of Equality, for example, uh, and that actually needs to change. Um, so we need to have, I think, a target for people who come from ethnic minority backgrounds, uh, but also uh, dedicated recruitment campaigns to encourage people, because we do need uh, a generation of young people growing up in Ireland who are people of colour to see black and brown school principals, judges, Keen Corla perhaps in the future. Um, who knows? Uh, Isn't that amazing? Tell the black and brown people to go back home and, 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 and do it what they can do in their own homeland. A white man, he seemed white, saying that it's very white, and that needs to change. That doesn't make sense to me. They don't like you. Even though you agree with them, they still don't like you. And they'll come after you. A stupid idiot. That's why your country is beautiful, because it's very white. If it were very any other color, it would be very beautiful. What the... Why do you think the people of color enter into your land? It's very white, it's very beautiful, and it works. Think about this. You have black people, some black people, who think they're the Jew. They're the real Jews. And they call themselves the black Israelites or something like that. They really think... They, but ain't nothing around them to imply that they're the Jew. They don't own nothing. They don't make nothing happen. Their women control them. They have. They think they have to have more than one and can't even have no one. And and yet they think they they chosen one. So God chose you, right? And you became a ghetto person. <laughs> What kind of God would do that? But they're just trying to feel that, make themselves feel better than the white man rather than doing for themselves. It's okay to be black. Just don't identify with it because it's not who you are, by the way. And this dumb man, the pri- Irish prime minister need to be fired. Right, as soon as he said that, there should have been a sign, you fired. Remember how Donald Trump used to fire those folks on his TV show? You're fired because you're not going to keep our country going. What the? What about the children? Watch this compilation. Rishi Corner continue to investigate all of the circumstances of a serious assault which occurred on Parnell Square East shortly after 1.30 p.m. this afternoon, Thursday, the 20th of November, 2023. Preliminary indications are that a male attacked a number of people on Parnell Square East. Five casualties have been taken to hospitals in the Dublin region. These casualties include three young children, an adult female and an adult male.
Yeah. You let them in your country. You say it is too white. This is what they do. This is like in all the white, not all, I don't think, but most of the white countries, the white people are speaking the same language and they are being destroyed. The people they're pretending that they're trying to help or to show love to are robbing them, killing them, raping them, breaking into their businesses, burning down their property. Oh, but it's too white. The Guardian has reported that Ireland police chief has warned that far-right radicalization will continue to disrupt the country. So he called it that mess, far-right radicalization, instead of talking about the illegal aliens and the immigrants who are there creating these problems. So I got to react. I have not seen these <laughs> clips. I have to react, and then I get back to the call. There is that one line over right there. 888-7753-773. My producer, Sean, is here. He's also an expert on the Jesse Lee Peterson show. I need to react. Yep, yeah, so, you haven't seen these before. I have not seen them yet, Phil, my first time. And, uh, you know, we can move through them, through them quickly. Just quick reactions. All right. The first one is a news, news radio from News Radio. Melanie, I'm single, you're single. What do you say we get married? Well, I'm glad you finally decided on the direct approach. Yeah, well, I'm a businessman at heart. As am I. What's your offer? Single rich male seeks matrimony. Primary residence? Westchester County. Would you be open to considering a secondary residence in Manhattan? Central Park West? South. Done. <laughs> Time spent together? Eight hours, five days a week. Seven hours, 12 hours, weekends. 55 hours aggregate. Specifics to be determined later. I'm amenable to that. Children? One. Three. Two. Done. <laughs> That one of them has to be a male. I'll see what I can do. Vacations. December, Hawaii. June, the vineyard. June, fine, but Hawaii. Nope, the vineyard. Is that a deal breaker for you? I'm afraid so. Me too. Well, we gave it a shot. <laughs> I'm sure you'll find a better match. Thanks for the time. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that... That is funny, but yes, so typical for men today. I know. I'm sure, you know... Isn't that better than than dating and going through the whole song and dance right and just, just have a little two two or three minute conversation? That's right, and you know right away, man, she ain't gonna obey you. Right, and it's done. No, I love yeah, that. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't. He did try to negotiate. So yeah. we don't. We don't love that. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, that is funny, man. Uh, anyway, next Instagram. Short and whatnot. Um, a lot of y'all already know what's going on and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? If you've been on IG lately, um, but this is a message for YG um, and whatnot. And from a real one to a real one, man, I'm asking that you please take my baby mama, you know what I mean, off your IG with her, you know, picture of her busting it all open and whatnot. You feel me? So, <laughs> you know, I wake up, text message, DMs going crazy like, this your baby mama. You know what I'm saying? So I go over to YG Instagram, <laughs> baby mama on there busting it open, going crazy. <laughs> all in the background cheesing and smiling got me looking like a straight goofy you feel me and you know what i'm saying and like oh if that's your baby mama you need to keep her in check you know what i'm saying baby don't listen you feel me and, you know, I'm out, now i'm out here looking like a goofy you feel me so like i say man if you're a real one i'm asking that you please take my baby mama down wow that's his baby mama with a lace on the hell like that hello yeah, so she's a you know stripper wow he's like please take this down <laughs> You should dump her real fast. <laughs> she doesn't listen. If she doesn't obey, it's over. Dang. Wow. <laughs> He's all embarrassed. He's begging people to take it down. Yeah, please take it down. How all about right. her not doing it? That's crazy. And the fourth one from TikTok. To young people and all of the people who wants to get covered in tattoos, I want everyone to know that I regret my tattoos and you might regret yours when you get older. I just came to the realization why I'm single. Dude, I am I look crazy. <laughs> like, that's why guys don't want to wife me up. <laughs> and I just come to this realization today. I thought these men wanted, like, you know, big, strong 
tough girls. I'm covered in tattoos. I don't think any guy's gonna wipe me up because I can't take me seriously. Wow. And I just realized that. A good point. <laughs> wow. Better late than never. Nobody want no tattooed up woman. She thought the guy wanted that, a strong woman. <laughs> like I just... <laughs> no wonder why I'm single. You like, there was, there ain't no guy gonna marry me up like this. Wow. Yep. Got two more. A dollar late day short and two tattoos too many. <laughs> Amazing. TikTok. So my wife traveled to <laughs> Africa and is coming back today. I'm at the airport waiting for my my Oyo. I'm so excited. Ah, <laughs> look at Yomo. <laughs> I know you miss me too much. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, your boy, your boy, your boy, your Mama boy. is home. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my baby is back. I'm so happy. How are you? Wish it, Mama. Okay, so, so we are here now. I'm so happy. Wow. You can see how happy I am. My baby is back. And then he go home and he cry. What the? Mama is home. That's a, they call it PDA, Public Displays of Affection. I'm telling you. Instagram, the last one, yep. Instagram. He ate. And never been there. Have you ever been there? Really, Mama? 38 years old. <laughs> really? And never been there. No children or nothing. <laughs> you sure miss a lot of life. Why do I have to get married and have kids to have a good life? You do have no good life. I do. You don't go nowhere. I do. I just got <laughs> back from a trip. By yourself, no man. If you don't have a man, you ain't nothing. <laughs> really? I'm not nothing without a man, huh? You're not a lesbian, are you? <laughs> no, are you? No, I had a husband, tell you that, huh? I still have sex. You what? I still have sex. I know you do, but that's not right. That's dirty. <laughs> Sleeping around like a... <laughs> oh, it's one person. One person. <laughs> Sleeping around like a... <laughs> 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 uh, Grandma, <laughs> tell me about the good old days. She was 106. I don't know. I think uh, I missed that part. But wow, <laughs> Grandma is face. You ain't got nothing going on. As the young people say, you ain't got nothing going on. Sneak around like a slut, I guess. Whatever. That's Grandma, good. tell me about the good old days. That's amazing. You ain't got no man. You ain't got no husband. You ain't got nothing going on. Oh, that's funny. Oh man, thank you, man. No that was mind blowing. Ha <laughs> ha